This question is going to require a couple skills from you, such as naming like in the last question, stoichiometry, but then it's also going to be balancing chemical equations, limiting reagent, and then the last of percent yield. So all of those are things you should know from Gen Chem, but it's good to practice and make sure that you have those concepts cemented well into your brain. That way we can use it this semester in quant. So to begin with, our first compound is iron 4 sulfide. Remember, iron 4 is Fe4 plus with sulfur, and we find that on the periodic table, S2 minus, which means this compound cross the charges, reduce them, we end up with FeS2, iron 4 sulfide. Plus oxygen gas, remember, is diatomic, so plus O2 yields iron 3 oxide, so if it is iron 3 plus, plus oxygen 2 minus, it's going to be Fe2O3 plus sulfur dioxide. Why does it have that di in there? Because sulfur plus two oxygens, that's going to be covalently bound, so it gets those, me those prefixes there of di, tri, mono, etc. So sulfur dioxide, just like hydrogen monoxide. Okay, so now we have our equation. But anytime you have an equation, what do you think you should do with it? Balance it. All right, so what are we thinking here? How do we want to start? The way I started was I noticed that there's an even number of oxygens on this side, so it has to be even. That's fine with my sulfur dioxide. It's not okay here, which means anytime I have an odd number of these, my iron three oxides, then I'm going to have an odd number on this side, which is not possible. So I need to make this be even first, okay? As I'm doing that then, I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna start out with two and see if that balances things okay. So meaning I've got two of these, which that means I need how many irons? I need four. So I'll put a four here, four irons, four irons. And that means I have eight sulfurs. So I need eight sulfur dioxides, eight sulfurs here. So then how many oxygens do I have? Two times three gives me six, plus eight times two, which is 16. Six plus 16 is 22. If there's two of them, that means I need 11, because 22 divided by two is 11. So now I have a balanced chemical equation. If two didn't work, I would have tried four, six, and so on and so forth. So now we have a balanced chemical equation, and let's start solving. So we have known amounts of both of these. That means I did not simplify the problem for you and say excess oxygen or something like that. It means you have to figure out how much product can be produced from both reactants. So in this case, we're starting out with 27.835 grams of iron 4 sulfide. And then we're also starting out with an amount of oxygen. We'll start out with this one first. Since the question is asking me about sulfur dioxide, I'm just going to convert these grams all the way over to grams of sulfur dioxide. And then I'll compare how many grams of sulfur dioxide can be produced from oxygen. That's the way I typically find I solve stoichiometry or limiting reagent problems. There are lots of ways to get there. But in the end, you need to determine which one's the limiting reagent. Because if you just work this to the end, what if this is not the limiting reagent? You'll be wrong in your prediction of how much sulfur dioxide can be formed. So let's convert this. So the first thing we need to do is grams to moles. So in one mole of iron four sulfide, what's my weight? My weight is 119.967, and that's grams. Then I need to go from moles of iron for sulfide to moles of sulfur dioxide. So I have four moles of iron for sulfide for every eight moles of sulfur dioxide. Next step, let's convert moles to grams. So one mole of sulfur dioxide is equal to 64.058 grams. Plug all of that into your calculator now and you should get 29.726 grams of what? SO2. Is that my final answer? Is that how much I could theoretically make? No, because we need to do the same thing now with oxygen. So oxygen we have 24.462 grams of oxygen. You cannot just look at these two and decide that oxygen is a limiting reagent because it's smaller. I hope you remember, if nothing else, I hope you remember that from Gen Chem. You have to be able to convert it to moles. You can compare moles. You cannot ever compare grams and say you have more or less. 
One mole, remember, is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, atoms, whatever representative particle you want to use. And so you can compare in moles, you can compare in molecules. You cannot compare to say who, how many you have more of in grams. All right, so let's do it. We've got grams. Let's convert from moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. And now we need to convert from moles of oxygen to moles of sulfur dioxide. So we have eight moles of SO2 for every 11 moles of oxygen. And now that same conversion factor there at the end of 64.058 grams of SO2 per mole of SO2. And I left my SO2 off on the board just for space, I'm trying to make sure I don't run off the room, run off the board. So that equals 35. 0.616 grams of sulfur dioxide. What do these two numbers mean? Am I ever going to actually produce 35.6 grams of sulfur dioxide? No, because this is my excess reagent, oxygen. Remember, excess reagent, limiting reagent, those are always reactants. And then my iron 4 sulfide is my limiting reagent. And so I don't have enough iron 4 oxide to produce 35.6 grams of sulfur dioxide. I only have enough to produce 29, but I have enough oxygen to produce 29.726, so we're okay. All right, so now that we've done that, we've figured out our limiting reagent, we know this is our theoretical yield. Okay, we can put it into our percent yield equation and get an answer. So percent yield, remember, equals our actual yield or our experimental yield, however you want to term that, and that comes from our problem. So we have 29.688 grams of sulfur dioxide, and I always write it out because that'll tell me if I messed up, meaning that was grams of sulfur dioxide, I'm comparing it here to 29.6. 726 grams of sulfur dioxide. If your units there at the end don't match, then you screwed something up, okay? Times 100 with units of percent to give us a total final percent yield of 99.872 percent. And that's our final answer. But see how we work through a lot of chemistry here. And so this is the type of chemistry you're gonna be responsible for. Figuring out how to go from ions to an ionic compound, creating a chemical equation from naming, then balancing it, grams to mole conversions, mole to different mole conversions, theoretical yield, percent yield, final answer. Lots of chemistry going on here, but you got this.